Hey everybody, I'm Barry Clark with Audio Video Charlotte. We're here in the beautiful town of Charlotte, North Carolina, at a home that was built around about the 1940s. We have a real fireplace, wood burning, not a gas insert, old lath and plaster, very, very tough installation. And our client's question was, how do we mount a television over this fireplace? We're using a very specific TV manufactured by Samsung. It's called the Frame. One of the beautiful things about this television is it doesn't require a 120 volt power outlet, which is very tough to put in in a narrow space where we don't have the depth for a nylon box to meet building code for the electrician to run power. The tiny one connect cable, which is proprietary to Samsung's Frame product, carries both audio, video, and electrical from the one connect box, which lives down at the baseboard area in the furniture up to the TV. As a safeguard, as this was a particularly tough installation, we've gone ahead and ran some CAT6 through the wall so we can use that for any other type of uh, video delivery system by adding a Balin to the CAT6 and turning it into 4K HDMI if we need to. So this is our entrance point down here. There will be a piece of furniture sitting in front of this next to the grate that's going to house all the electronics for this television. We had to cut a few holes down low, then we transitioned up the wall, encountered many studs between this point and the exit point of which we had to cut our holes and drill through the adjoining studs to fish all of our wire. Another one of the questions our client has asked us is the previous homeowner had had some speakers installed and a rudimentary audio system. We're really going to modernize that. So as we have these slightly older style mechanical rotary volume controls that are just meant for room attenuation, we're leaving them in place. These are a good redundant backup. Should the smartphone's battery fail and the music's playing and the client can't find an alternate method of turning the music off, it can walk up to the control, rotate the volume control anti-clockwise and the music will cease to play in this room. The speakers, as you can see, have been taped off and prepped for painting by the interior decorators. And we're gonna overlay this with a brand new modern digital delivery system that's gonna deliver high quality, crisp, clear digital audio that can be trolled off of an app from a smartphone or a tablet from anywhere in the house. Here we are in the family room. And as you can see, there's wires magically appearing out the wall. We had to do the same style of installation as we did in the previous room. This is a traditional television this time though. The frame television doesn't require power at the monitor location. This TV does. The electrician has helped us out in this, in this instance by adding power. We've retrofitted some HDMI cables and some CAT6 to keep this future-proofed. We've cut through our studs, transitioned across the real fireplace. The decorators have come behind us again and done a fabulous job of patching and painting this. All of our wires are over in the cabinet off to my right, which is where we're heading next. Well, here we are at the equipment location. Obviously, we're in the rough end stage. The job is still a construction site. No electronics have been installed yet. But some of the questions that lead us to get to this point are, where can I put my electronics? Can I put them in a cabinet and still work them? The answer is yes. There's a few things we have to overcome to achieve this. One of them is ventilation. So I have some fans going in to push and pull air in and out of the cabinet. Obviously a location to bring all our wires to, to make the stuff work. Here we have the electronics going in for the television for this room, the patio, and all of the networking. Also the music distribution hub is located in the same cabinet. As you can see, we've roughed in all our wiring for the indoor and outdoor television via HDMI. We have our CAT 6s that we've ran all over the house for hardwired networking and wireless access points to make sure in an older home like this that has lava and plaster, which is traditionally very tough for standard Wi-Fi to transmit through, we're gonna fix that for this client so that all of his streaming services work beautifully. With the doors closed, how am I gonna work this stuff? Well, we have some great product that uses radio frequency. That means I can work the electronics with the doors closed. Radio frequency works through the cabinets, walls, floors, ceilings, etc. So it's perfectly safe now to have the doors closed and operate the equipment. Obviously ventilation goes in, that keeps everything cool and humming along and being very, very happy. Lastly, our app control for music delivery works the same way we talked about in the room that has the frame television with the speakers. 
So this is going to be the central hub. Once the electronics are all installed, this is going to be the heart and soul of this house. So one of the additional questions our client posed was, we had these older style in-ceiling speakers that were left by the previous homeowner. We wanted to maintain music and audio in this room, but we didn't want to spoil the aesthetic of a very, very nice clean ceiling by having speakers mess that up. So we pulled the speakers out, the interior decorators went behind us, patched and painted over the holes, leaving this ceiling beautifully finished. But how do we bring music and audio back to this room? Well, we've achieved that by roughing in our speaker wires during the roughing stage of this project into the cabinets that are behind me. When the uh, construction's finished, we will be installing high quality cabinet style speakers manufactured in gloss white that blend in with the existing cabinet, bringing high quality audio back to the room and maintaining the client's aesthetic. Okay, here we are in the master bedroom. A couple of the questions this time around posed by our client was, my wife's gonna have a small workstation. How do we get good, fast internet connectivity so she never has any issues? This wall behind me transitions to the equipment location that we previously filmed. So we've made a cut in the wall. We have an entry plate. Here we're gonna bring our CAT6 through for any connectivity, including a wireless access point, which means that the folks can use their laptops in bed and still surf the internet at a blistering pace. So here we are in the master bedroom. As you can see, we've already roughed in electrical, HDMI and CAT6 for future proofing. All of the equipment that feeds this television is gonna live in the other cabinet location that we previously filmed and showed you. As you can also see, the interior decorators have done a fabulous job of patching and painting the wall, making this look beautiful and seamless, ready for the final installation of the television. Well, as you can see, it's raining which is a great segue into how do we watch television in an outdoor living space that's not climate controlled. Well, we're gonna achieve that by using a weather rated television. A television is designed to be outside in the elements, whether it's cold, rainy and damp like it is today or hot and humid in the summer. This television is gonna be on an articulating arm because the client requested the television be viewable from anywhere out in this living space. So this arm is gonna pull out about 28 inches and the television is gonna rotate from side to side, almost 180 degrees, allowing the TV to be watched from any location in this outdoor living space. But the equipment that's gonna feed it our television signal, in this case an Apple television, is not weatherproof rated. Luckily, it lives on the other side of this wall and the factory remote that comes with it is gonna work the equipment via Bluetooth, controlling the volume, changing the inputs, working the power on and off, all from a single remote control. This television and mount are both weatherproof rated, but the Apple TV is not, so it needs to live inside in its climate controlled environment. But this will turn this into a fun, enjoyable outdoor living space.